In our first video, we are basically looking at the differences between conduction, convection, and radiation. This cuts across all, all level and A level. But in the next video that we are going to discuss right now, we are going to particularly look at the A level section. For A level section, we also describe how the molecules gain their energy, how they move from one end to the other end, and some of the experiments that are involved in order three. All these ones have experiments, and for A level, we also have calculations that are engaged in this topic. So, uh, get ready for the A level part. We shall start with conduction. In A level conduction, of course, A level and O level does not change, but, but what the content that is added in this section here makes it adverse, and the other one was ordinary. Uh, what makes items move? We shall look at poor conductors. Uh, and good conductors. You must have to remember, in good conductors such as metals, what is the difference between a good conductor and a poor conductor? The first difference that we used to look at was, in good conductors we have mobile or free electrons. And in poor conductors, this, the electrons are bound to their nucleus. Electrons are, they are not free to move. Electrons are bound to the nuclear. So what happens with this statement? What happens is when you're looking at the conduction, when heat is supplied at one end of the poor conductor, end A, the atoms at this end gain thermal energy. When they gain the energy, they vibrate at higher amplitudes. As they vibrate at higher amplitudes, they collide. By the way, atoms are very close to each other. As one gains the energy, it collides with the neighboring energy, the neighboring atom. When this collides with this atom, it gives part of its vibrational energy to this nearby atom. In that process, all these atoms will go on gaining energy because of the vibrational energy they gained. When they, gain, when, they, when they move, when the energy moves from atom to atom, at the end of that day, this cold end also gains heat. So the heat transfer in poor conductors is as a result of atoms gaining energy. They vibrate at higher amplitudes. In the process of vibration, they collide with the neighboring atoms. The process continues until when the heat reaches the other end that was cold. This is what we call conduction in poor conductors. The same statement happens if this is a poor conductor. The same explanation will be engaged in this part. Only difference is that we shall add on the electrons. Because whether it's a poor conductor or a good conductor, they all have atoms. So the atoms here also gain that energy, the thermal, the heat, the thermal energy or heat energy. They vibrate. After vibration, they collide with the neighboring atoms. Now those atoms go on colliding until when the energy reaches this end. That was the similar, that was a similar explanation to what we have done for conduction. The only difference we are going to add in that in addition to atoms, we also have free electrons in these good conductors. Now those free electrons also gain thermal energy. When they gain thermal energy, their velocities increase. When the velocity of an electron increases, also its kinetic energy increases because kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So when the electrons get higher velocities, their kinetic energy increases, and when that energy increases, that energy is given to the neighboring atoms because also electrons will be moving from one end to the other, and they will go on colliding. In the process of movement, they collide with atoms they come across on their way. Whichever atom they collide with, they give part of their energy to those atoms. When the atoms gain their energy, they also vibrate. So there are so, uh, multiple vibrations here. Atoms have gained energy from electrons. They have also gained energy from the, their similar atoms. So there, there are two types of uh, gains that we get here. So when they get this energy, atoms move, atoms transfer that energy from one end to the other end, as electrons are also transferring the energy from one end to the other end. Therefore, an electron, I mean a metal or good conductors are better transfers of heat because they combine two things. They combine the electrons that move drift from one end to the other end and also they have the atoms that also gain energy and collide with the neighboring atoms, hence transferring the energy. 
this is the explanation why uh, they can ask you to explain why uh, no 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 they ask you to explain the mechanism mechanism of heat transfer heat transfer in good conductors or in poor conductors that's what should always be explaining now we are going to look at the other part the part of uh, we want to look at the, the, the more advanced information where we have the, the cultivations that are coming in to this part here now in this video we are looking at still we are looking at conduction we are, we are going to speak these three modes we give more explanations to each of them then we have started with the good and poor conductors now in the conductor we are now we are looking at the transfer from the hot end to the cold end but we are checking how does heat get moving from one side to the other side does it get lost because we know sometimes we say heat lost by this heat lost to the surroundings now we have considered two items one the unlagged what is lagging? Lagging means trying to insulate, trying try to protect your heat, accumulate all the heat in one region, and that doesn't get away, doesn't, that doesn't escape the surroundings. So unlagged is when you have, this is our material, this one here. This material is not lagged, it doesn't have any covers, any insulators. But we have another material here that is lagged. Now in a material that is not lagged, a man that is not lagged, heat moves out, heat escapes through the surroundings. And when you get the graph, of course, the temperature here, after some time, temperatures, the temperature stabilizes. When it stabilizes, if you have, for example, 80 degrees, you might end up having 60. You might end up having, the next one can be like 30, maybe 5. You check that after some time, the difference here is 20. Here it is 30. Here it is 25. It's not uniform. Let's say it starts with, uh, this is like, it's 100, 40. Now the difference, First is constant, but not uniform. 40, 30, 25, something like that. So when you have to draw a graph of temperature against that, this, this has means from this end to the other end. If you have to draw a graph, it looks like this. A graph for unlagged conductor. But when you come to a lagged one, there is no heat lost to the surrounding. So if you start with 100 here, this will be 80, 60, if the portions are the same. If these are 2, 2 centimeters, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 40, you find that here the difference is 20, difference 20, so the difference is the same. After some time, the, const the temperatures are constant and the differences are the same. So it means the rate of transfer of heat here is constant. And if you are to draw a graph of the lagged conductor, this is how the graph appears. It is a uniform decrease of the temperature. Yet this one was non-uniform. This is how the curve is. So these are the graphs for conduction of transfer of heat between unlagged conductor and a lagged conductor. Now we are going to look at the factors, the factors that determine the rate of heat transfer that are going to take us to the calculations that we want for this part of conduction. In the previous video, we are discussing the graphs that show us the lagged and unlagged conduction, how it transfers through those materials, but when one is insulated and the other is not insulated. Now for this example, for this part here, this video, it's just to show us how we could go about the calculations. These calculations are very common in your papers and, and they are the sweetest, they are the simplest in all the papers that you'll be doing. But now let us start by considering a thin disk of dimensions. This is like a length. Dimensions dx, uh, one end has temperature theta 2 and the other end has theta 1. Here we assume theta 2 is greater than theta 1 because our heat, these arrows are representing heat. Heat is transferring from this region to the other region, meaning that theta 2 is higher than theta 1. We assume that these are lagged conductors. Now the heat transfer, this is the most important, heat transfer, the, not the, rate, the rate of heat transfer, that's what I read. The rate at which heat is transferred, the time at which heat is transferred, rate of heat transfer depends on two factors here. Depends on, okay, three. One depends on depends on the temperature gradient temperature gradient means temperature over the distance that's what it means it also depends on the cross-sectional area this region here this is called cross-sectional area depends on the cross-sectional area of that material now if you are to get this into a formula we shall say heat transfer is dq the t q is for heat and t is for time so it makes it red depends on the cross-sectional area and the temperature gradient, the theta, the t. Where the theta means theta 2 minus theta 1. 
Now mathematically, if you look at this expression in science, we normally remove this. We remove this symbol and we put a constant. So we shall have dq dt is equal to negative k a d theta over d. Somebody can ask us, why do you have a negative? When you do mathematics and you study the differential equations, we shall look at the negative parts in that part, but here we can explain it. A negative is because as the heat is transferred from one end to the other end, it goes on reducing. If you had 80 degrees Celsius here at the temperature, you end up with 20 degrees. It means heat has reduced. A negative, a negative uh, differential equation or a, a equation that reduces comes up with a negative. If something was increasing, this temperature was increasing as we move forward, then it would be a positive. So the negative is because there is loss of heat as we move from one end to the other end. Now this is the formula that we shall be using in this topic, in these examples. But somebody can ask us, but what is that k representing? Because these constants in science have names. This k in this part here, k is what they refer to as the thermoconductivity. We must have heard about this one so many times. Thermoconductivity is this letter k. And from this, actually most of the questions, most of the parts they are going to ask you first will be define the term thermoconductivity. First in physics, to define a term, there are very many definitions that you can use if you check your textbooks, but you can also get it from the formula itself here. Can we make k the subject? If you make k the subject from here, we shall have k is equal to, let us make k the subject, the QDT, this is the rate of heat transfer, we divide it by A, the theta, the T. So, how, when we get this k is equal to this, if I'm to have k is equal to this, then we shall have dq dt over 1 times 1, where 1 is the cross-sectional area, and this 1 is for the temperature gradient. So, how can we define k? Let us define k. So, k is the rate of heat transfer. You see, k is equal to this, but it's only equal to this when the area is 1, and the temperature gradient is 1. So the simple definition could be K is defined as the rate of heat transfer per unit cross-sectional area per unit temperature gradient. That's the simplest way. It is the rate of heat transfer through a material per unit cross-sectional area per unit temperature gradient. So from that formula, from that expression, and from this, can we get the units the SI units of that K. Now the SI units from here, let us just get them. This is Q over T is energy, that is power watts. Uh, this is per meter, per meter squared times, this is temperature is K, per Kelvin, these are all down, that's what I'm putting in K. Per Kelvin, uh, no, no, this is, sorry, this was not supposed to be Temperature gradient. This is temperature gradient, not T. This is X. X means the length. The temperature gradient means length. This X here. So this is going to be K over. This whole thing can be K over M. Something like this. Mathematically, you can now get it from that stage. So can you simplify this? When you simplify this, you can write it down in your books and you simplify after. When you simplify it, it will come up to something like this. Let me just wait for you the final unit. I shall get is watts per meter per Kelvin. This is the SI unit of thermoconductivity. It's a common question. They ask you to define thermoconductivity and they say state its SI units. So, uh, now I'll show you the, how to apply such a formula in this, this example.